welcome to lecture number 4 on network analysis and uh, in our uh, first three lectures I introduced to you uh, various kind of sources means uh, the sources could be ideal or practical and it could be also either a voltage source or a current source. Only thing you should remember is that ideal voltage source will be represented like this uh, without any internal impedance in series okay? and its EMF will be shown in this diagram and uh, two terminals I am just telling AB. So, ideal voltage source should be kept open circuited okay? and a practical voltage source so will be represented like this with its internal resistance which is supposed to be small A and B. These will be the terminals of the source and then I told you the current source okay? and uh, uh, the open circuit EMF is E and uh, this voltage source should be kept open circuited when not in use. Otherwise, it should be connected to the other network with which you want to energize this voltage source. Similarly, uh, the current source, a practical current source will have uh, a magnitude of current, specific magnitude of current. This is ideal, this one without any internal impedance. Internal impedance in case of current source we discussed will be connected in parallel with this and uh, uh, ideal current source of course, uh, the internal impedance or resistance is very large. So, it is open circuited and since the current source uh, will try to drive current in whichever branch you connect in the circuit irrespective of what impedance you have connected. Therefore, uh, the impedance connected when open circuited is very large therefore, a large voltage may appear. Therefore, uh, an ideal current source uh, or a practical current source should be kept open circuited like this. Here also it should be open circuited. So, that the current will flow like this and potential difference between this two part will be 0. Mind you internal resistance is there, but if you keep it in short circuit condition there will be no power loss here also because all currents will be flowing like this. So, it should be kept short circuited. Then uh, this, this current source we have shown is nothing but equivalent to a internal resistance R and a an EMF. EMF I am sometimes showing circle plus minus or a battery. Generally, large DC voltage sources are shown with these symbols. Okay? Small battery voltages are shown like that. So, it is like this. Similarly, if uh, such a situation occurs, So, it can be represented uh, uh, this I will rather uh, cut it out here. So, any circuit with uh, this thing in a practical voltage source and a load impedance connected R L is equivalent to a current source across A V whose value will be E by R these we have discussed E by R and uh, in parallel with this resistance R internal resistance of the battery and then the load resistance these two circuits are equivalent we have shown that by parallel conversion of this R and R L this current load current here and load current there will be same. Now, only problem is what happens if the 
So, this way you can go also you can always uh, transform a circuit having a current source in parallel with a resistance like that where E E by R into R is the see these are the terminals. So, if you look from side A B into the circuit through the terminal A B in the circuit to the user uh, it does not matter whether you are representing the source as a voltage source in series with a resistance or a current source in series with a resistance external world that is R L will never know nev can never distinguish between these two. So, anyway so uh, it is always uh, you can convert it if necessary my personal um, suggestion will be if in a circuit there is current source live with it why unnecessarily you change it to a voltage source. Of course, if you get uh, uh, some very great advantage you do that, but in general you should not do similarly voltage source let it be voltage source. But after learning this then there is uh, uh, the the awkward situation will be you have an ideal voltage source E no internal resistance A B. Can I represent it uh, draw an equivalent current source circuit for this? Um, because the <coughs> internal resistance of the battery is 0 and if you want to do that following this rule this magnitude of the current internal resistance being 0 here E by some sort of 0 number and in parallel e, we are telling it will be shorted is not because parallel this R if R is 0 here internal resistance of the battery is 0 then there are awkward situations it looks like it you cannot do it. Similarly, <coughs> if you have an ideal current source I with terminal A B and there is no internal resistance of the current source which is in parallel. Therefore, it is very difficult to represent it in this fashion a source and an internal impedance what is the value of this this resistance what is this resistance this is infinitely large. So, infinitely large resistance here therefore, what do I do with this if you try to convert in this way you connect anything uh, this circuit tells me oh nothing can be done because this is an open circuit virtually. Therefore, these are some awkward situations. But I will tell you one thing that you note down very carefully that okay, if it disturbs me what I will do in a circuit if there is a ideal voltage source and current source. First of all I will never attempt to convert them from voltage to current source or from current source to voltage source because there are difficulties because in case of ideal voltage source internal resistance is 0 if you want to convert it to a current source E by that 0 in series with uh, parallel with 0 resistance does not help me to analyze the circuit or the load current which will be connected there. Similarly, vice versa as I pointed out, but nonetheless one point I must tell you that suppose you have an ideal current source i if that disturbs you why what should i do uh, if it is an ideal current source what you can do is this you can imagine that okay it is not ideal i current and in parallel with a resistance I will just do that and across a b circuit is connected 
a b some load resistance is connected but this one i can convert it r tending to infinity this much if you say then this is the situation live with this r this r value is not known i mean no finite value then what you can do is this you can convert it to no problem like write e r here no i into r here in series with r limit r tends to infinity like that you write no problem there i am feeling comfortable okay this is what i can always do and then your circuit is there load current you want to find out suppose you connect to this circuit a resistance of rl so what i am telling rl you connect then solve the circuit what will be the load current il il will be this emf which is i into r divided by r plus rl this will be the current na in this circuit is that clear so now you say r tends to infinity r tends to infinity means uh, rl this r is very large compared to rl so this will be equal to ir divided by r as r tends to infinity compared to rl it will be large and this will be i itself so what i am telling if somebody connects a resistance rl better don't try to convert it if you wish you bring this resistance and pretend that it will be infinite solve the circuit then at the end say r capital r tends to infinity what i am telling you will get the same result if you connect rl what will be the current in rl ideal current so psi over but this point should be understood got the idea therefore if it is disturbing you at all then pretend that okay an infinite resistance is connected then then do this and then find out the current and at the end so whatever current you find out it will be a function of this capital r and capital r tends to infinity similarly a voltage source ideal voltage source e these are the terminal e internal resistance is zero i want to convert it to a current source which i cannot if r is strictly speaking zero what i am suggesting in that case you show this resistance like this e by r remembering that r tends to zero this is this correct representation and then i will say okay if that be the case then it should have an ideal current e by r and in parallel with a resistance r now whatever you connect across uh, ab solve this network to get the load current suppose rl is connected solve this network then when you find out this current it will become a function of smaller il whatever il you will get for example this current i want to find out so il will be in this case it is so simple this current is e by r total current you want to find out current through this branch so this into r other resistance which are in parallel 
divided by R L plus R division of current in parallel resistances. Then you say limit R tends to 0. Try to find out this magnitude. What it will become? It will become R tends to 0. So, this can be straight away uh, written like this E by R into R by R L and then limit R tends to 0. What is this value? This will be simply E by R L. E by R L. So, same thing I mean battery connected across R L ok. This is the current and I the point I want to make it in this case I told ok conversion is not possible. If somebody insists no no convert it and try to do it then ok imagine there is series resistance R. So, this you can then do E by R parallel R find out whatever network is connected A B solve the currents in that network and then do not forget to take limit that R tends to 0 you will get same result. Anyway, I have made my point you have understood that. <coughs> Therefore, this can be solved. Achha. Now, what I am going to do is this as I pointed out earlier also that K V L K C L is the main thing one need to know to solve any given network to find out currents or voltages across various branches and so on that is fine. But we will try to use some techniques to simplify our calculations or understanding of the circuit. To begin with I will discuss these two methods. So, we will be first discussing about two uh, very popular method one is called mesh analysis which you know, but let us review those things mesh analysis and then node analysis of circuit. And this two I will first do assuming your sources are of constant values that is DC. If it is voltage source no time varying thing of course, that restriction we will remove after few lectures. So, I will assume some circuits where sources are constant sources constant DC values. and uh, only resistances only resistances are present in networks I want to find out the currents. To understand <coughs> this what uh, I am telling suppose you have a network like this. Suppose you have a network and uh, there are sources connected. Say this is E1, these voltages may be known, and these are resistances R1 say R 2 and R 3 <coughs> and suppose there is another resistance here connected 
R4. Okay, and I want to find out currents in the various branches. In this network, that is the thing. Now, uh, to solve this uh, network problem, as I told you, I can solve it by assuming this current, that current applying KCL, KVL in various loops, but let us be uh, methodical how to do it. Now, in this network, you find there are several windows like this or several closed path. For example, this is a closed path, this is a closed path, this whole thing is also a closed path like that. So, first I distinguish between loop and mesh. So, it is like if you consider this is window, window pens are there. Okay. Now, any closed loop you identify in a network, these are loops. Okay. For example, this whole thing is a loop. Similarly, this is also a loop, this is also a loop and this is also a loop. But you see, in this outer loop, this this bigger loop there are several sub loops present in this particular loop within that there is no other loop present and when such a thing occurs, uh, happens then we say this is a mess for example, this, 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 this is a closed loop, but it is a mess. Similarly, this is a mess within which there is no sub loops. Similarly, this is a mess. But is the whole thing is a mess? No. Within that, there are several loops present. Therefore, meshes are those closed loop within which there you will not find any other uh, uh, loop to be present. Okay. So, so you, given a network I can distinguish between mesh and loops. So, uh, so this is the thing mesh. If so, in this network there are three meshes, this is one, this is two and this is three. <coughs> the mesh analysis tells you that you assume the mesh currents. So, I, I can say that all meshes are loops, but all loops are not meshes obvious this this is a loop this loop is a nothing but mesh this this is also a loop nothing but mesh so so distinction between loop and mesh i hope you have understood now what you will do is this this three mesh you assign currents which are called mesh currents i1 this current i will say this is i2 and this mesh currents you say I 3. Okay. These are called mesh currents which I have assumed. It is preferable because I told you while solving circuit direction of the currents is your prerogative. You choose any way you like, but since I want to develop a uh, systematic uh, method to solve a network by mesh analysis, I am telling that assume the currents in the clockwise direction like that. Now, what really I have assumed? I have assumed actually this branch currents to be I 3, is not? 
this current is I 3 has to be that is what I have assumed. Similarly, this branch current I have assumed I 1 this branch current I have assumed I 2 got the point these are the currents I have assumed. Therefore, by applying KCL here, I see that the current from left to right will be I 1 minus I 3, because I 1 is coming then I 3 is going. So, I 1 minus I 3 or one can say I 3 minus I 1 from right to left in whichever way you feel you can write it. Similarly, this branch current this is uh, I got it to be uh, I 1 minus I 3 coming in and you can apply KCL here. So, this current will be I 1 minus I 2 from top to bottom. This branch current will be I 2 minus I 3 from left to right and in this branch of course, this is I 3 this is I 2. Also, I will connect at this point which uh, is not necessary, but let me connect another resistance here R 5 in this network. Okay. So, in mesh analysis you first identify the meshes and then uh, assign loop currents in a following a particular logic that is clockwise current I will do. Then what you do? You write down KVL in these three meshes. For example, I would like to write down KVL, KVL in mesh one. I will write down mesh 1. Now, while writing KBL I know the, this current here in this R 1 branch is I can say plus minus and this drop will be R 1 into I 1 minus I 3 is not. Similarly, this current from top to bottom is I 1 minus I 2 they are opposite and this drop can be written as R 2 into I 1 minus I 2 with this polarity mind you that is very important. If somebody says no, no current is I 3 minus I 1 from right to left if he writes then he has to write plus here minus here for the voltage drop R 1 into I 3 minus I 1. So, I, I have done this. Then I start from this point and try to reach this point traversing this mesh. So, from this to this it is E 1, from this to this it is plus to minus. So, minus R 1 into I 1 minus I 3 and uh, from this to this once again minus R 2 into I 1 minus I 2. and you reach here from here to here nothing. So, I have come back to the same point where from I have started and KVL says me that this must be 0. So, if you transfer the sides of keep source only on one side you will find this is nothing but R 1 plus R 2 into I 1 this and this you bring it to that side minus R 1 into I 3 and minus R 2 into I 2 this must be 0 that is the no 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 0 this must be equal to E 1. So, this is the KVL equation in mess 1. Similarly, I can write down the KVL equation in mess 2, which I will just tell. You see there is a pattern in this case. 
what is that in mes 1 if you want to write down the kvl equation there are three unknowns i1 i2 i3 because if i somehow can solve i1 i2 i3 i will be in a position to uh, find out the currents in, in any branch i like that will come as a difference of these two mesh currents where there is a common element present in this branch current will be i1 in this branch current will be i2 and so on so this is the equation one but i must form three equations so this is equation one similarly in mesh two so if you see there is a emerging pattern coefficient of i1 will be nothing but sum of the resistances present in this mesh r1 plus r2 into i1 coefficient of i2 when you are writing kvl equation in mesh 1 will be coefficient of i2 will be the common resistance whatever is present preceded by a negative sign coefficient of i3 is the common resistance whatever is present between loop 3 and uh, mesh 3 and mesh 1 that will be minus r1 that is the thing equal to any sources present in this network yes there is a source e1 and whose positive polarity is such that it helps in e 1 to circulate in the direction I have assumed current comes out from this from the positive end of a battery in general. Therefore, that is why it is plus e 1 why plus e 1 because plus of this battery is uh, uh, in the same sense as that of i 1 current sense. So, if that be the case one can write down once again in the same way KVL equation in mesh 2 where I 2 is present. I will say look here the coefficient of I 2 will be sum of all the resistances R 2 plus R 3 plus R 5 into I 2 that is what it will come R 2 plus R 3 plus R 5 in this mesh these are the resistances present that is why I 2. Will there be a coefficient in mesh 2 of I 1? Yes, there is a common resistance and that will be minus R 2. into i 1 plus this then what will be the contribution of i 3 it will appear as a drop in r 3. So, minus common resistance existing yes r 3 r 3 into i 3 that is all. So, all the drops I have taken and on the right hand side I will connect uh, this is plus mind you on the right hand side I have to check whether there is any source present in this case voltage source only and should I write plus E 2 or minus E 2 in this case see the polarity of E 2 that battery is such that it opposes I 2 therefore, it must be minus I 2. So, this will be equation 2 in mesh 2. Similarly, in the third loop KVL, so this is KVL in this one and uh, where should I write KVL mesh 3 will be coefficient of I 3 will be sum of all the resistances that is it will be something like R 1 plus R 4 plus R 3 R 1 plus R 4 plus R 3 into I 3 I 3 that will be 
then coefficient of i 2 yes it will be common resistance preceded by minus sign that will be the coefficient of i 1 in mesh 3. So, r 1 minus r 1 into i 1 plus will there be a term involving i 2? Yes, there is a common resistance minus r 3. So, minus r 3 into i 2 and this is plus and uh, the right hand side should be any sources present those terms will appear and in this case there is nothing present. So, it will be 0. Therefore, after assigning the mesh currents, you can go as I did for the first equation. You repeat for the second and third loop showing the polarities this that and then I am telling you uh, the final equation in uh, will be like uh, like this. This is the thing original thing K V L I had applied noting down plus minus sign this that ok, but finally, it will come like that from where I uh, told that there is an emerging pattern because coefficient of I 1 will be in mesh 1 you are writing. So, come here sum of all the resistances will be coefficient of I 1 coefficient of I 2 will be is there a common resistance in the common wall between these two meshes yes there is minus R 2. Uh, uh, coefficient of I 2 should be minus R 2 into I 2, I should have written this term earlier anyway it does not matter then minus R 1 into I 3 because there is a common resistance following the same logic I do. Therefore, you see writing down of K V L equations 3 equations you require to solve this you have been able to write down 3 K V L equation and for that I should not take practically much time very quickly I can write if I know this rule ok this is what is going to happen that is the advantage mesh analysis you generate 3 independent equations and then of course, these 3 algebraic equations are to be solved. Only one point I will tell that uh, I can have uh, choose any other loop for example, the outer loop K B L will be satisfied yes it will be it has to and one can say ok I will get another fourth equation and that is not to be it will also give you another equation no doubt, but that equation can be will not be an independent equation that equation can be generated from these 3 equations only. Therefore, you identify the meshes write down the K V L equation in each mesh which following this logic becomes very simple and you get your solutions. Therefore, how many independent equations will be there as many meshes are there. So, this is about mesh analysis, we will continue with some example in the next class what to do when current source is present. Thank you.